Doomsday, Judgment Day, or the end of times. It's an idea that has existed for thousands of years. A day where everything ends and nothing is left on this earth. A day where humans cease to exist and maybe even the entire world disappears out of thin air. Earthquakes, tsunamis, nuclear holocausts, global warming. Um, whatever it is, it won't happen anytime soon, so why don't we take a look at a really cool game today? That's right friends, I'm Sunset, and today we're talking about the sequel to Jet Set Radio, Jet Set Radio Future, released the 22nd of February of 2002 for the Microsoft Xbox. You know, the old black box. Jet Set Radio Future expands on the world of Jet Set Radio, showing a more futuristic look of Tokyo. It's different in many ways to its predecessor. The world is bigger, it's a bit more open, and the time limits the original game had are pretty much gone in favor of an unlimited time. You can explore every corner of a level in this game to your heart's content. The characters have redesigns, and a few new characters were introduced. Overall, Jet Set Radio Future is one of my favorite games of all time. Even if I prefer the original one over it, for many reasons I won't go into too much detail today. In this video, I want to talk about a forgotten mystery in this game. Well, so what is it? One of my favorite levels in this game is Kibokaoka Hill. This place is huge. A stroll through the rooftops leads into grinding on the power lines, passing through a silo full of missiles, then moving onto another residential zone where you finally lead into a set of power pylons by a dam. And on the other side you have a little residential area with a plaza that has a clock in it. A cool setting in an already gorgeous looking game. But what's up with this level? The mystery we are taking a look at today involves this clock you can see in the plaza. When you enter the level or select a character in a safe point, this clock resets its time to 17.58. If you move fast enough through the level to reach the plaza before the clock hits 18, you can see a cool animation where it opens up, it rotates a few times and then it closes up again. Never to do this animation again, unless you exit the level and get in again. This little clock was labeled the Doomsday Clock by someone in the early 2000s after the game was released. This isn't the only clock in Jet Set Radio Future, by the way. There is another one at Rokaku Dai Heights. However, this one doesn't do any animation. It doesn't matter how long you leave the game running, this clock just never ever moves. So, why the name Doomsday Clock? Well, I'm not quite sure. Nobody really is online as far as I know. A common theory is the name comes from all the missiles and shit around the level, or someone relating the name Daruma that can be read on the clock to Doomsday. But what is Daruma? Well, Darumas are these little balls that look like a dude with a mustache on a luchador suit. They represent good things like saving money, having good health, and other things like that. Their appearance is based on Bodhidharma, the first teacher of Zen Buddhism. They are mostly made as toys, but they are also bought as lucky charms and some people burn them at the end of the year in a huge ceremony thanking them for their use. It's pretty cute. So sometime in the early 2000s, some illiterate fuck thought Dharma had something to do with the end of the world or some shit, despite Buddhism having none of that stuff as far as I'm aware of, and linked that to this clock both at Rokakudai and at Kibogaoka Hill. Let's put this mystery to rest right now actually. My first stop to put this mystery to rest was the Jet Set Radio Future speedrunning Discord server. Try saying that shit three times in a row. Where I politely asked the guys there what they knew about the clock. I heard what I already explained. How the clock is a cool model that plays a little animation if you get to it within two minutes of getting into the level. Or how there is another clock at Rokaku Dai and some dude left the game running there for an ungodly amount of time until nothing happened. But there was also an explanation of how the in-game time works, which is really cool and I will read that right now. Kibo clock address discovered. Kibo is the name the guys at the speedrunning server use for Kibo Gaokaheo. Because, you know, writing Kibo Gaokaheo every time they're gonna refer to the level is kinda stupid. Um, anyway, he shows an image, right? 
So the image, the clock reads 12, 34, 56. Now he explains, the clock counts in frames. The first digit is always a 1. So the actual value of this clock is 2 hours, 34 minutes and 56 seconds, which would be 189,760 frames. When you enter the map, it init's to, which, you know, init's would mean initiates or translates, I'm not quite sure how that works. It init's to 3880800. I don't know how to read that stupid number. 3,880,800. Fuck you, sunset, you stupid bitch. Which would be 1758, like I explained earlier. And then he shows an image with, you know, the clock at that time. And then he explains, normally the clock spin animation triggers at 18, but it's not bound to this value. So if you pause the game, the clock keeps counting in the background. Let's say you pause for 10 seconds. When you resume, the clock animation will trigger um, at 18.10. But I think it wouldn't be 10, it would actually be like 18.00.10. But anyway, that's on this part. <laughs> So what triggers what triggers it is another counter that counts in game time. How long you have been in a level and playing. The same address also holds the time at Rokakudai Heights clock. Only this time it doesn't init when you enter the map. Apart from the Shibuya platform score address, which is, you know, a little platform, it's it's like this little billboard that shows the score that you have currently at the level, I'm not quite sure. Um, so apart from the Shibuya platform score address, which is constant, this is the only address so far that persists between zone changes and even between new games slash load, game, load games, only changing between game routes. In fact, it starts counting right from the Sega logo. Next up, I hit the internet dumpster, also known as Twitter, where I ask the man, the legend, the funky uncle himself, Hideki Naganuma, if he knew anything about the clock. He did not reply, which sucks ass, but a few people did retweet the video, which is nice, I guess. Guess I should have mentioned Keanu Chungo 76 Wholesome 100 for the Nintendo Wii instead. Living with little to no information, I'm now going to present my theory on what this clock is. Now let me explain my theory on both clocks. So first, what's up with the animation? Well, I think the animation was meant to show at any point where the clock changed hours, because that's what the clock does if you reach it before 18 hours. The thing is, it doesn't matter if you wait for the clock to roll over to 19 hours, it doesn't do anything. It won't do that animation again. And the one at Rokako Dai doesn't play the animation either because that function is broken. I think that's the most likely possibility here. A function that just broke at some point during development, and they never fixed it. And eventually it led to this becoming this quote-unquote mystery. I, I know nothing about data mining or digging through the game's code to see if applying the function that makes the clock spin to every time the clock switches an hour would do anything, because the game doesn't keep track of time the same way a regular clock would do as explained in the image before. It counts frames. Which also explains the thing with the clock at Rokaku Dai and why it never spins. The function is just broken. I am aware of Pachimochi's video and the idea of contacting the developers of the game to ask about the clock is a good one in theory. However, contacting people that not only worked on this game almost 20 years ago, but who also we don't know if they even speak English at all is easier said than done. I would ask the lead level designer, but this person isn't really listed on the credits. It just shows people that design the level graphics. Which is not quite the same, though it's really close. If we could narrow down the list of people that not only are active on social media, but also can speak English, then we would have enough people to solve the mystery of the clock. Don't go bombarding Hideki Naganuma with questions about the clock, because I'm sure he doesn't know and that's the reason why he didn't really reply to what I said. He came to my mind because he's the only person I can think of that fits all the criteria I said a bit ago. People that are active in social media, worked on the game, and speak English. Well, with that said, is there really anything else to this clock other than that? It all seems like a little easter egg and that's all it could possibly be. 
However, this little journey around the internet got me thinking about how much I love the series and about how many things these games have that make them so special and make me hold them dearly near my heart. Perhaps in the end this mystery is the friends we made along the way or some shit. But well, that will wrap up the video. Researching this mystery was a bit tough at times because of the lack of information about it online. Like, I could only find places like Amino or some posts on Reddit or an old forum about it, but that was pretty much it. I hope this video can shed some light on this mystery and actually kind of solve it. If anything does happen in the future involving this mystery being solved, you guys would be notified about it if you subscribe, so please consider subscribing. This is not the last time I will be talking about Jet Set Radio Future, by the way. I'm going to make a few videos on it in the future, and I would love it if you, if you guys got to check them out when they are done. With that said, thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Bye for now. Guys, very quick, something something cool happened. So, I, I finally got the 100% in Jet Set Radio Future, that's really cool. I just wanted to share that. Well, anyway, see you later. Also, my headphones broke, so don't expect anything until a couple weeks after this video goes live. Bye.